That's Jordan, what I've been doing. can I introduce you to your new favorite, eighth favorite thing? What was, what was that? Root beer milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <sighs> what? Why? Why? Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Vin, joined by Young Man Jordan, and staying up late past his bedtime, uh, middle-aged uh, Pedro Mateus, together with Ushad Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form, you know it, Cocaine 2 Cane Voltron, Cane's in stereo, baby, you know it, you love it. What's new, gentlemen? We got a big, fat, chonky, lovely, hug of a week of Linux gaming news to throw everyone under because we're, we're driving the bus. Honk, honk. What's new? Spider-Man's new. Spider-Man happened. Why are we even remotely curious about Spider-Man? Because, I don't know if we talked about it on the show, maybe last week, week before, it came out as Deck Verified before release, to which I was like, oh, that's nice. That's nice. So I went and picked it up yesterday. When it came out, that was a bit of a dumpster fire. That was didn't run all that well. Then again, I'm being, using big, evil, green, NVIDIA-powered 3060. It was struggling. It was struggling bad at 1080p. Played around with it. They did an update to Proton Experimental a little bit later on during the day. or well, that evening, really, because it was after we finished Trackmania, Rounds Points, and Turbo Golf Racing. Join us for that on Tuesdays and Fridays. But then it kind of run. Once you cut DLSS on, things started working about right. Realistically... On a 3060 at 1080p, you can probably expect, you know, 60-ish, you know, sometimes up to 70, sometimes it'll dip down, you know, because I haven't got any pre-compiled shaders yet. You're welcome. I'm sure I'm generated more than a few for everyone. But then again, do you want to spend 60 bucks on a four-year-old game? That's up to you. But in that same vein, I do get a question. We all use ProtonDB, right? You use yeah, ProtonDB, I use ProtonDB. It's just a natural place to go. And you're like, I want to see how this game's going. I'm going to throw out a thought. Here's why I like ProtonDB. ProtonDB has a thing where it will do, you upload your actual system stats. So you don't have somebody showing up saying, Spider-Man runs uh, at 1440p, maxed out ultra settings on so my 1030, no problems. And you look at their system specs and, you know, nothing matches up. That's why I like ProtonDB. It's a name you can trust. So the first 24 hours, I don't know why the system's in place. I'm sure it's a good reason, but maybe something can be refined. Something that can be worked on is speeding that up. Because when you really need that information and that collaboration and people getting together with accurate system specs with what they're trying and what they're doing is that first 24 hours of release. Because you might end up, somewhere like Linux underscore gaming. That's just guesswork at that point, man. And that's not to throw that subreddit under the bus. It's just Reddit in general. It's just anonymous people on the internet. So maybe that's something ProtonDB could uh, possibly work on. Maybe. I don't know. Jordan, what's new with you? Have you fallen down any stairs today? <laughs> not today. Okay. Uh, not not not, rec- not recently, but it's, it's a constant looming threat. It's a sort of Damocles... Hanging over my head, or I guess like behind my knee, waiting to like push my knee forward so that I fall down the stairs. Please get a new dog named Damocles. You know what? Sure, I right. I, I, I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll give it a sword too. Now, I, I, not not much going on this week, honestly. It's just been a lot of work. Um, I have I, I I I lost track of where I was in my diet, so I recalculated, and I have three more weeks of being able to eat before another six weeks of starvation. So. I have that looming on the horizon, and I'm trying to stuff my face while I can. <laughs> What's a good, um, like, guilty? What What do you eat right now that puts you into the couch-induced fetal position food coma? Like, oh, I, not nothing, nothing so far yet. I've been I've been pretty good about sticking to clean food. Um, like even on your cheat. <laughs> no, I, like. Uh, so I, I I got I got this tip from uh, Renaissance Periodization, which is a fantastic YouTube channel. If you're looking at losing some weight yourself, uh, if you're gonna do a cheat meal, do like your eighth favorite thing and not like your first, second, or third favorite thing, because that stops you from like going completely ham. So that's what I that's Jordan, what I've been doing. Can I introduce you to your new favorite eighth favorite thing? What was, what was that? Root beer milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <sighs> 
why 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 would why would you so like scott brought up make maple syrup milk if, if this got brought up in the pre-pre super shows and by the way maple syrup milk actually kind of like goes together root beer is this just like that licorice taste you know, milk Ugh. no, no. Just, just for the rest of the world outside of canada when you hear maple you're like, no it doesn't but it's a canada thing they're like hey man it works shut up I, I can <laughs> <laughs> like milk, 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 milk is sweet. Like um, maple syrup is sweet in that kind of same way. I don't know. But what if I have diet yeah. milk? I mean, that, that that's just skim milk. So ah yeah. man, Coca Cola diet milk now with lime. <laughs> don't mix. <laughs> don't mix milk and Coke. Mm. <laughs> it's, it, it's not good. <laughs> Coke, mi- milk and lime. Mm, it's thick. Mmm, <laughs> curly. Sounds cheesy, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> A, a drink you can chew. Pedro, I have it on good authority that you had to hide your cage earlier this week. I did. I have to, did an interview uh, for one of the uh, local companies we're hiring around here. It was just the first interview, so um, we'll see whether or not they liked me. But yeah, I had to cover the cage uh, <laughs> uh, momentarily while I was there. Uh, but I, I, I do want to mention... Revolt is now available on Steam. Uh, big kudos to H2 Interactive, who have decided, you know what, let's just, we own the rights to it, let's just put it on sale. Thank you. That was very much appreciated. You can buy the game. <laughs> so wait, what, what, what does this have to do with Nicolas Cage? I'm confused. N- n- no, the, 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 <laughs> that's a different thing. <laughs> Jordan's thing, what he's trying to imply is that Mr. Cage might look a little bit like a horse. How dare you imply that? Nicolas Cage is a beautiful god Adonis of a man, and the horse is just a mutated pile of jello at this point. It's been ten fucking years. It's the steam. <laughs> Are you guys ready for some joy? Oh, is yeah. that the props? Is that the that, 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 that is what I ran upstairs okay. and almost fell down a flight of stairs. I, I got to get this in, man. In, in the pre pre super shows, we're like getting wild up, we're getting ready. I was like, you blink. And like, George, just go, man. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I fucking roadrunnered out of there. Because you you mentioned Joy Cons, and I'm like, Fuck, I gotta, I gotta go get the Joy-Cons. <laughs> uh, what the- Jordan is holding in front of the screen is a little over $3,000 worth of Nintendo controllers. It's true. It, it, yes. it, it really is. Um, and <laughs> this one has a busted uh, analog, or this one has a busted analog stick. Uh. Um, but anyways, uh, the reason I pull those out is because we talked last week about Steam Input getting some uh, better Joy-Con support, and it's gotten a whole lot better uh, because now uh, you could use these guys as like an individual controller, or you could like Voltron them together if you had the peripheral and make like a new controller. Uh, so now the uh, the Steam uh, input UI supports that. It will show oh man, you, you can use, use the Joy Cons over the Bluetooth. Yeah, it is genuinely like somebody went and listened to like week before last pre pre super shows and we were arguing whether or not um, what constitutes is like. Can you use it? And, like just check marking that out. Like done, 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 done. Yes, now. <laughs> yeah i mentioned that last week it's like oh yeah no it's someone from valve is totally watching us live uh but yeah the, the apparently the uh the first implementation had some hiccups because they released the hot fix the very next day uh there was a little lag with the right joy con specifically for some reason not the left one the right wouldn't one wouldn't that be <laughs> to, like four hours into something wait god <laughs> <laughs> but my brain is used to the lag now how do i compensate See, that that sir is the problem because your brain will compensate for that that is like going for something with a little bit of lag to know like like it'll completely throw you off it's mm-hmm. it's the same thing of like you don't like a default mapping of a button but you've been using it for a while and then mm-hmm. you swap it to the uh, to one that you know and you still keep hitting hitting the original button now because you're like ah, i'm too used to this 100 percent. um jordan have you even tried it had a chance Bluetooth no, I, 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 I have not because a these are these are drained. I gotta actually charge them, uh-huh. and uh, that, I'm too lazy to do that. <laughs> um, my th- my theory was that like whoever is working on Steam input just got like a lot of these at a uh, like a police auction or something, and they're just like, well, shit. Now I got I got people to play Towerfall <laughs> with. Well, I mean, hundred percent. Uh, those are like great little stealth devices, though. Like for your yep. roommate that doesn't know that it's paired when they have a uh, yeah. picture open. Like, yeah, grr, 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 grr. indeed. Don't do um, that. But- Without recording it and sending no. it to me. <laughs> Don't do that while not. While I'll just see cares. Uh, Proton, hey, GE, Customs. 
Indeed. Uh, version 7.29 is out now. It was uh, released, well, right around the time we were doing the show last week, as uh, Gloria Sagrul yeah. is off to do, yes. Uh, and uh, it comes with a workaround that uh, ameliorates the uh, stuttering in Fantasy Star Online 2. And a big kudos to Nova the Canadian on Discord for the heads up, because it's like, oh yeah, no, uh, Fantasy Star Online 2 totally works on Linux now. So I went to go have a look. It's like, how do you make it work properly? Ooh, ooh. Proton G729. There we go. Uh, the full screen hack doesn't work anymore. That's actually a bug in Proton Experimental, uh, unless you have FSR enabled. But Gloria Segrol decided, you know what? Let's just make that the default going forward. If you're running Proton G, you get FSR. And I fully supported that decision. That's the reason I ran Proton G for the most part. So might as well just enable FSR as well. Yeah. <laughs> so sp- sp- speaking speaking of Nova the Canadian, apparently uh, Mira's a little gun shy after I yelled at him for pinging me at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> about updates. And so now he's telling Nova the Canadian to do that. So that's why you got notified. I got notified for something similar. Uh, Vermin Tide 2 um, was confirmed or I got reports of it working fully in game with uh, GE 28. I just try. I downloaded twenty nine because that was the most recent at the time. And yeah, one unskippable introduction un- introduction mission later, uh, you can actually get into the game and it runs reasonably well. But I, ca- I gotta say, Fat Shark, let me get to an options menu before you force me to start playing your game, please, please. Thank you. You uh, you will not deny our art. You will experience it the way we intend, hacker, filthy yeah. analytics user. <laughs> me and, Back me on and your my, knees. Me and my, me and my custom kernel. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, no, uh, GE putting a full screen or FSR on by default. I mean, like it's one of those things where if you're using GE, like Pedro said, you're probably using it for FSR anyways. So it removes the step from the, the, the list of like, Hey, I got to fuck around with this shit. Um, how well did a uh, Vermintide 2 run with your, uh, vintage, uh, retro video card? Uh, 1080p medium. Uh, that, cause that's just what I happened to set it at. Uh, it was holding like well over 200 verps aside oh, from like great. the initial like yeah. and herky jerk. So it's, it's, it runs pretty well. All right. Not DX12, then. <laughs> Not DX12, yeah. Uh, DX11. <laughs> that could be a thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, I got a theory. Um, actually, I got a proposition for you, if you're a budding game developer. Turns out, Epic Game Store is a brilliant idea. It's a good idea. It's something you should aspire to, because it is a way for you as a developer to test your product. Not only get a check when you sign that exclusivity deal, you can test your product for a full year, and absolutely fucking no one will know it. It exists. Case in point, Axiom Verge 2 is out, which has been out for a full fucking year, which a couple of days ago, we all went, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, when Ethan announced it on Twitter, it's like, oh shit, yeah, that mm-hmm. did get released, didn't it? Uh, wow, you could- yeah, so yeah, this, is, this has been in testing for a full year. Now it's finally available to purchase uh, because, like, come on, Epic Game Store exists for the free games. If that, maybe you launch your Fork Knives or Rocket League or whatever you do these days. Huge fan of the original game. And uh, I was like, you know what? Socket free time. I got right into it. And the original, the original Axiom Verge just nailed the game loop from the original NES version of Metroid. Whatever that was, whatever that magic was sprinkled upon it, this had it. Well, the first one did. And it seems like the second one's got a lot more of it. Now, a couple of issues, though. It wasn't really smooth with V-Sync on. I don't understand. Uh, maybe you have this problem. I've always kind of had this problem when I get V-Sync, V-Sync enabled, especially with like side-scrolling platformers. Not liquid smooth. I don't want 60. What do I want? I want something like 70, 75. No, you know, I just broke out. You can do this in Mango Ad, by the way, if you don't know. All that is going to be in the show notes, but I like it. Uh, it's just a huge world. Like I, I get a little bit exhausted, like running around, like looking at places like, Oh, I wonder what's going to be there. Can I get there? Oh, what part of this story is going on? And then I went to my save game and it's like 1%. I'm like, God damn. Oh yeah. You're, um, you're, you're going to be backtracking. <laughs> it, there, there's going to be a lot. I die a lot. It is punishing. It is fuck you hard. Not like meat boy hard, but you know, you're not going to, brutalize your way through this there's there's no tanking you, you, gotta, you gotta work for it you do you do 17.99 currently 10 percent off regularly 20 bucks linux native port no proton needed 
day one release, one year and day one year and one day. Three hundred and sixty six <laughs> day release. After its Epic Game Store early access period had expired and that check was cashed, it is now available to the public. And um I I mean if you like the first one, I see a lot of people complaining that um it's not the first one. Okay, I don't understand that argument. <laughs> I wanted they, more they, of the same, but they, it they, is. They wanted, but it's different. They wanted, they wanted Axiom Verge the Lost Levels. They didn't want Axiom Verge 2. I, man, I guess that's what they were looking for. But, I mean, I, I dig what it is. I like it. Um, it's just a fun, if you like the original Metroid, I mean, the OG Metroid, you like that type of stuff. If you like uh, like the Dust, Elysian Tale, if you like that Metroidvania, old school stuff, It'll get you. Like yeah, I've it, intentionally like been pushing it aside. I'm like only a little bit a day. <laughs> this one, uh, the first thing that um, called uh, my eye to it was how much like blasphemous it looks. Like the color palette, very very that uh, those pastels, the purple, the uh, off beige. Uh, orangey type of situation that's very blasphemous -y. and uh, it's like oh it's like playing metroid but with the blasphemous color scheme it's like very good very good <laughs> what came first axiom verge or blasphemous i think uh, i think it was the first axiom verge that uh, was the first to release by about five years <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> actually <laughs> not five years i think it was two years but yeah <laughs> what, I, I mean, what you, he meant to you, say you is blasphemous had a really similar color palette to axiom verge no the first one uh, the first axiom verge had a uh, slightly more muted um color For, scheme the first axiom this verge one was very metroid it was like yes <laughs> all of these are equally correct because it depends on where you're at man you <laughs> It goes to the Metroid thing. And like, all yeah. Metroid looked the same. Like, no, the fuck it didn't. If you were playing no. it on the Game Boy, it did. <laughs> Fighting yes, games. Be, Does this even count as a fun game? I, I don't know. We did get keys for it uh, out of the blue. I did not ask, but thank you, uh, CMC Games, uh, for sending us some keys. Kung Fu or Sun. Yeah, that, that, that's the name of the game. It's called it, yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's. Uh, I'm looking at it. It's like, oh, it's Double Dragon for the Master System. There's a bit more detail than <laughs> Double Dragon no, had, but it, it I is see a bat. <laughs> Bla Black Belt, Black Belt, the next generation, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, and clearly is in dire need of uh, more eyes on it. Uh, it's not very expensive. It's only like uh, two pounds here. Uh, and it has two user reviews. So maybe give it a look. It's not terribly expensive at I all. <laughs> I saw this. I looked at it. I'm like, hmm, all right, maybe, possibly. Because uh, if you're my age, if you're my age, you straight up are like, that's Kung Fu Master on the NES. That's what that is, 100%. <laughs> And um, I played this not out of that game when I was a child, but it also has a dash. What we're looking at now is like sometimes you have a boss you have to beat, and health bars and shit show up with lives. So you get like the OG Street Fighter, like that 1987 Street Fighter. If you remember seeing that in the arcade, like before Street Fighter 2 showed up, it's got a dash of that. I don't know how it's going to pan out. I didn't get a chance to play it. It's only yet. a single player, right? $2.99. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think it, it's it has primarily. local oh, no. split screen, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you can play it over remote play. Asterix on Ubuntu 2004 or higher. Okay, Asterix, me, that's not how you use that. <laughs> I no, guess it, the it, Asterix it, is for the Glibc 231 SDL2 or, or, SDL2 mixer. <laughs> or, or, may, or maybe it's saying it supports all versions of Ubuntu, like Kubuntu and Zubuntu. And ah, it could be, yeah, it could be the wild card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star, Star Ubuntu, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bash mob. <laughs> Jordan, are you good at mazes? Are you good at well, okay? Um, mazes like back menu type mazes, like good mazes. When was the last time you like, played a maze like that? Like, Ooh. Pen and paper? oh, on like, yeah, on the back of a menu, yeah, type thing. Oh, man. That, 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 I, I couldn't give you an answer to that, man. That was Mine a while is ago, probably more recent than yours because that's I. 
I don't have a problem. Like if I'm out and about and somebody's like, Hey, let's go stop getting some deed. hundred percent chance that I'm not going to fuck with anybody there to like, Hey, can you make some hippie moonbeam type shit? I'm like, I just don't get something to drink. So I like always look at menus and I look for things like that to do. Or like the word search or whatever. Yeah. 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 Uh, so so this, this this is kind of interesting. And the uh, developer sent us this. Uh, this this game is kind of of interest game is of interest to streamers because what it is is it's a game for your audience. Uh, it's an interactive intermission where uh, you hook it up to your channel and uh, you hook it up and you stick this up and in the chat people can try to race to the center of the maze while you go poop while you I don't know do whatever it is streamers do when they're not in front of the computer when OBS is still streaming to Twitch um the developer also says you can use this for contests it's sort of like an impromptu raffle system oh, so this say. isn't even out yet huh no it's, it's not, uh, it's it not is very out. much an alpha according to the developer he wrote us a message on curator connect it is very very early days and uh if we decide to okay. try it to if let I, him know if, if i'm hearing you correctly Pedro, what you're trying to say is we're trying it in the after shows and right yeah. <laughs> is that what we, we, we could, yeah <laughs> we could try absolutely <laughs> I, I, I don't know, like, it, uh, the, the, the guy brings up a good point where uh, live streaming is super popular, but there isn't really a lot of games that sort of take advantage of this. And while this, this isn't something to be playing, like, full-time on your stream, it's something that you can throw up as an intermission. It's, it's, a, it's a neat idea. I, I think it's... I think it's uh, I'll have to play problem. around with it because I, I read through everything on the page. You need a video on the page as part of the Steam thing, so make sure you mm -hmm. get that up on your store page no matter what. Um, I read through that page twice. Still not 100% on the mechanics. That's why I was like, you know what? We'll try it in the after shows. And, and I, I, uh, I think it's like bang maze and then you like give directions or sort of like see that. Pokemon. That's what I want because um, I, I want to find out. I want to find out yeah. what's, if there's more interaction because when I think like Twitch plays outside of like the fun stuff like Twitch plays Pokemon or shit like that, uh, the most common thing I think a lot of people are going to be familiar with is marbles. Which is the Mar 3D Marbles, marbles game where you just type mm -hmm. in you know, like S and it just has like it drops a bunch of marbles and you get to see your name as it random. I'm hoping it has more interactivity than like just. I guess from what I could tell, uh, you are uh, once you start playing, you drive your little dot to get to the center of a maze. That's oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm curious to see how that works. Now, portals, Forsaken portals, man. Mm -hmm. I was so in happy. space. I was so happy to see this earlier Sportles. this week. I was sitting around alone in an empty room, curled up in the fetal position, going, "Man, if only someone released a card game, but with spaceships and shit." <laughs> Much to my surprise, thank you for Saken Portals for delivering that which my body craves. Explore a huge universe uh, on your journey on behalf of a stellar union. Trade with alien races. Build your own space stations, collect resources, upgrade your ships, space adventure card, battle or top down 3D. Uh, do we got a video? Yeah, we got it. How much does this thing cost? $18.99. Now I'm going to shut the hell up while, uh, <laughs> Jordan, you play the card games. I, I do sometimes. Uh, yeah, so this, uh, it, I guess it's like a privateer style deck builder if you ever played like Wing Commander Privateer back in the day. Um, or maybe you could say it's a little similar to something like The Last Federation or Drox Operative in the sense that like there there is a game, but there's also like the faction game of there are there are um, there are multiple win scenarios. Make. Yeah, ex <laughs> exactly. There are alliances you can make. You can build your space stations, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know. It, it, it could seem interesting. Um, I get a little bit of an FTL vibe from the ship combat. Mm -hmm. Um but it's it's a, it's a little more card based. It could it could work. It has mostly positive reviews, so it might be worth a shot. We got keys for it, so we did. B big big thank you to Pod Games who were the third ones to send us keys for their game uh, this week. This one I actually yeah. uh, shot him an email first. I was like, oh, that that looks all right. Let's, let's shoot him an email. I was I was say, like, oh, how, how, right. how many times can you copy paste <laughs> the same thing in the show notes, Pedro? <laughs> I didn't copy paste it. I actually wrote it down. <laughs> hey, man. Pedro did a victory lap about that. He's like, I was in the show notes before Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I was on uh, Tuesday uh, and then <laughs> again on Friday. <laughs> so that's going to be a thing. It's, Everybody's it's favorite software conglomerate, Bethesda slash Zenimax, I mean, whatever the fuck it is. They're gonna Microsoft. <laughs> our dumb, simple simple brains will no longer be confused. They are going to simplify the id software Steam store listings. Thank you. I was 
never at once confused by how to fucking get anything on Steam from Mint Software. <laughs> but that's a, no one was either, but thanks for fixing it. Here's the plan. Starting August 10th, they're going to be rolling out changes with the Steam Store listings. Things will change. Here's the lowdown. Doom, 1993. It's going to be called Ultimate Doom in Steam. That's not going to be confusing. No other major no, changes. No, it was called Ultimate Doom. Now it's called Doom 1993. That's what I was reading. Maybe I misread yes. it. Um, <laughs> you, you saw the order. But Doom 2 will include Final Doom and Master Levels. That's one install package. All right, so you're going to get Doom 2, Doom 2 Enhanced, Master Levels of Doom, Final Doom, Doom 3. Hey. Will be merged into a package containing the original Doom 3 plus Resurrection of Evil, Doom 3 BFG Edition. Okay, that's nice. Uh, Quake 2, you're going to get Quake 2, Quake 2 The Reckoning, Quake 2 Ground Zero, and of course, Quake 3 Arena. You're going to get Arena and Team Arena. Now, we got all the bundles, and you can go read all of this. A bunch of stuff's been delisted, but it's all been kind of bundled in. Now, there's two ways to think about this. Now, if you already own the Doom, you're going to get a bunch of bonus sodas, right? Yeah, if, yep. you, if, you're, if you own Doom 3, then you get the bonus BFG edition and the uh, expansion as well. Right, so. but if you're thinking about buying Doom, guess what, motherfuckers? I'm sure the price is not going to change. And uh, part two <laughs> of that equation, now you got to get all the DLC at the same time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's the correct way to look at it. <laughs> this, was, this is nothing to simplify. Fuck or all. This is just like, hey, we can make sure it's bundled and you got to buy it all at once, motherfucker. Although the advantage is, if you had just the base game of all of them, you, you didn't have any of the DLC. Now you get the DLC for free. I think that's like the vast majority of people, to be honest. Yes. Because like it's it's Doom. It's been out for like thirty fucking years. I had the classic Doom uh, edition, and that didn't include Doom sixty four. Now it does. So I got Doom sixty four without having to buy Doom Eternal, which I appreciated. Thank if you. you. Already <laughs> own the games. This is good. But I'm thinking of our brothers and sisters out there in the future thinking about buying this, and I'm like, well, I guess I'm getting all that because now again. Bethesda, even though I have my suspicions that the prices will not change. Um, I think they're going to change. They're not going to go lower. They're going to go higher. It's, it's vintage, right? It's antique, antique doom. <laughs> the <laughs> classic collection still costs 10 bucks. So <laughs> I think ultimately at the end of the day for this, uh, for anybody like looking to do that, uh, if you're doing the vintage thing, you're probably just going to head over to GOG because all you need is the uh, art assets anyway. Yep. And there's, and there's like there's enough source ports out there. Yes, yeah, there's a million free versions to do about that. <laughs> because uh, we, pl- you know what? Here's what you know. Let Let's have a good riot. Why don't you Beth Master like uh, Quake Three Arena? I want to see the fallout. From ooh, 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 ooh. some people can get salty. <laughs> very, very. Salty. They can get away with that with the first Quake because it's not multiplayer. Quake Three is just multiplayer. Yeah, people are gonna get pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> People aren't even going to, like, play it and get mad at it. Well, anyways, coming up next, NVIDIA love open source, question mark? And also, oh, I love it. It's, we, we got to get to the chopper, man. It's raining H-Files. Stick around. Uh, there, there's a bit of news that are actual news because it doesn't happen very often. But, you know, when it does, it does. Yeah, that, trust me, that, that'll that make sense. <laughs> Listen to this what? sage fucking logic. It's I just had fire. a... I, I'm smelling burned toast here. I think I just had a stroke. What, mm. what is going on? Isn't that smells, empty, the smell of almonds? Smells like prophecy. Yeah, <laughs> Listen, it it, if you, if you want to butter my toast, head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, you can butter us up by joining, our, joining up and you can get access to our Discord channel. Uh, you can also get access to that by uh, subbing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, you get access to uh, pre pre super shows in where we talk about what we're watching on Netflix. <laughs> you can get our um, complete review of Simon. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we can, I, I don't know what else we talked about. It was kind of a blur. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can uh, RSVP to game streams. Uh, I'm trying to, periodically, I try to find people for Turtles or Left for Bra- or Back back for Blood. It's not you Left do. for Blood. I was thinking about that. You, you got to create You got to create your own thing. Jordan is, uh, I, I, see, I do. Well, Jordan and I have two, two different strategies. I'm like, motherfuckers, this is what I'm doing. Period. You're welcome to show up. Jordan's like, hey, anybody want to, like, fuck it. They want to play Left. <laughs> Come. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I usually I usually have plan A and plan B. It's like B 
in love with me? No, I'm going to have special fun alone times by myself. Hey, man. Uh, and then I'm going to turn on a live stream and play some video games. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, uh, just, or Patreon, good stuff. Uh, get access to the show notes. Get your name in the credits. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Uh, you can also uh, get into, oh yeah, we mentioned uh, Twitch subs. We got to thank PT Dave. PT, PT Dave, Dave is, man, he threw down that, um, what is it, 10 month? 10 yeah, month race sub. Race sub. Thank you very much. Stuck around for that long. Hey, uh, and that's got... going to get you invited to a couple things we do on like Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, we have our own private retro gaming server for Trackmania Squared. If you've been curious about them, you're like, huh, I like platforming physics with wheels. We got you covered. We got a do good like group of sequel? people. No, I don't. <laughs> also, that's available. the real game. Yes, yes, you, you, you'll get my heartfelt <laughs> review of the versioning between five seven and sequel eight. Um, but yeah, we do it. We got a group chat. Uh, we pop on. We live stream it, and we do like fourteen new tracks each and every week. On Friday, we do a points match. You get to throw in top three places. You get free games, and yeah. you know sometimes you get documentaries. Sometimes you get AAA titles because there's all these humble games that I've collected over the past decade that I've never redeemed and uh we're starting to play a little bit of turbo golf racing in the after shows and, and that's kind of like standing room only right now so i know we're gonna have people that show up after the track mania is like i want to play you gotta get in line that's only if like the people who are sticking around. yeah you gotta been playing track mania if you want to make sure you got a secured spot for that and even that we only got six spots but uh, we we got a store time. no we don't we don't. <laughs> yeah, we take it down the store. Fine. <laughs> no, no, no more. No more store. <laughs> store at LaceGameCast.com. Put my face in between your particular breasts of whatever you want. Uh, you can get Hello <laughs> stickers. You can get Lonely Penguins. Uh, we got coffee cups. We got, yeah, sticker, stickers and coffee cups and T-shirts. That's what we got. No no fanny packs. No booty shorts, unfortunately. Not but interchangeable. Do not try to drink out of your sticker. Do not try to drink out of your booty shorts. Without recording oh. it. <laughs> I mean, you can make a mug out of the stickers, I suppose. I, I, I su- you know what? Send us. A I was, I was going I'm to sure say I'm... you would die of like toxicity, but no, you would die of shame. <laughs> if you die, die of glue poisoning. Oh man, With second hor- degree burn. The, like the horse, worse. the horse is back for revenge, man. That's the, it's the scheme. No, um, we got, we got, uh, we got Witch Stones as well. Head on over to Patreon or not Patreon, LinuxGameCast.com, regular LinuxGameCast.com. Oh my God, that face is so disturbing. Uh, take uh, both over the uh, support button. I got a wish list. Pe- Ven has a wish list. Patreon has a wish list. Jill has a wish list. You can buy us stuff. You can send us little notes that we got to read live on air. You can buy me a chair. You can enable Pedro to break and enter into his neighbor's house, or you can <laughs> get a new thread booper for Ven. And you can even get, if you buy stuff for Ven, you can get your name on the glowing board behind him. How much space do we have left on there? You know, the board's quite, got plenty of space. We've got all this, more, God, uh, damn, yeah, the other side. <laughs> where, um, where am I? The entire other side of it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, you know, if you slide in an extra 20, I'll make sure not to put it up there. That's how it works. Um, yeah. No, no, you pay extra, you don't get named and shamed. It is brilliant. I want to thank each and every one of you. That's how we get away with uh, producing what we do with the frequency and the quality that we do, because I do think it's important to, you might not even like what we do, but you can drag it out next time somebody says you can't do X, Y, Z audio video wise under Linux. Motherfucker, we've been doing it for over a decade and you can do it better than you can on Windows and better than you can on Mac. Technically over a decade now, because it's episode 521. One week. Yeah, well, maybe, baby. Yeah, I mean, I started with the Cast <laughs> 12 years ago. Or 13 yeah, now, so yeah. Uh, let's get in to everyone's favorite company. You know, speaking of people who love NVIDIA. <laughs> yeah. Like Linus, Linus likes to say NVIDIA, number one in his heart. Not, yeah, just he, he just uses the wrong figure to do it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, no, as it turns out, every now and then, NVIDIA does have uh, their moments of, oh, Let's uh, actually, you know, get some free uh, brownie points with the Linux community. They released the source code to the kernel modules. Um, I don't know, like a month or two not months ago. Good enough, Nvidia. Bad, Mer. I'm like, not, not, I mean, not it for was, the ten series. <laughs> It, yeah, it was very much uh, a token gesture. Everyone sort of realized that once they actually started to figure out what was what. But these, well, they've been doing these releases every now and then uh, every few years. I remember when they released the Maxwell headers originally. Google Plus was still a thing. Uh, but this are the 3D class header files for 
all the architectures from for me through to Ampere. And these are the headers which have the address bits for the GPU 3D renderer and the texture sampler. That's very, very important um, for a graphics card especially for projects like Nuvo that are actively trying to uh, figure out how to get the NVIDIA cards to render stuff in 3D with uh, any kind of performance and put textures on meshes with any kind of performance. So it's, it's this- kind of critical. Cause yeah. like, <laughs> like good, good, good luck trying to install like a modern, like a modern NVIDIA card on a, like a modern Linux distribution, right? Like um, if, if Nouveau doesn't have support for the drivers, you're basically stuck in terminal mode until you can get a, a driver loaded. Well, I mean, so, even uh, in modern times, if you have something that is supported by Nouveau, what, what is your best hope? What do you really think? Like, maybe I can kind of get a little bit of an X installer. Can I get a little bit of a GUI? Maybe I'll boot into a graphical session. I don't care if it's 1024 by 768. Just, I get into a graphical session. Right. But <laughs> especially if you're, if you're running like home servers and m- most modern motherboards are like, Hey, you need a GPU to boot, but you're well, just even that old on the quadro network. that I was using in Jackbox, uh, with a Nuvo driver is like that thing. Now, fortunately full bore flat out, it was 35 Watts, but it didn't need to be running flat out. With nothing plugged in, not doing anything. And uh, <laughs> long story. We got AMD now. That's brilliant. Uh, but uh, hey, you know what? Good on you, NVIDIA. They don't have to do this. They don't have to release this. It doesn't benefit them in any way, but it does benefit us, especially with legacy products. If you have uh, like retro video, retro gaming cards like Jordan, you like yep. do that vintage gaming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. The, 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 the salty tears just down my face. <laughs> Oh, I spent so much money, and I might as well have just taken the briefcase of money and threw it in the fireplace. You know what? Uh, you got the 1080 Ti, and you got the good out of it. You definitely mind it, and it's gotten plenty of you. At least you didn't get like one of those 1080 Star Wars editions, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> <sighs> the second you know, Jedi uh, edition that were like a thousand dollars for oh a 1080, boy. not even a Ti, just a 1080. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, what they the, with uh, the Pascal headers in here means that like long term I'll have a driver option for the 1080 Ti and mm-hmm. um, like uh, Ven said Nvidia had open sourced a good chunk of their driver, um, which uh, the Nuvo team is looking at like bringing in eventually. Mm-hmm. There's like they, they they talked about the roadmap. We talked about that like years a year ago when they did that. Um, and I think that's another reason the world is kind of like looking over going Intel. Please get your shit together for a nano a Fento second. Yeah, and, please, please. We, 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 we need something with like working open source drivers. Because yeah, people don't bring that out enough. And Intel's driver stack's been open source forever. Apparently there was a bug with the few people that actually got to test Arc on Linux where the Vulkan performance was a bit shit, but they fixed it. And it literally, uh, I think it was 10x the performance after they fixed the bug. In Vulcan, it's like, oh, okay, so it's working properly now. All right. Now, now in all fairness, they could have that bit could have been. Now it works. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Just, just run, just run under ninety hertz, and you'll be fine. Don't Let's get to that. the chopper, baby. Yeah, ah, guys, come on! It's the Rock Game Launchers with my awful old accent. Yeah, so they have a new version now. This is a big are, one. Where are you at? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm going to go sue this Jordan guy. He's an asshole. All right. Um, yeah, but our Heroic Games Launcher, it's out. Uh, version two four zero. It's a big boy release. You got to do Love quite it. a bit of scrolling to get through. Damn, um, something's even in bold. You know that's important. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, the the Cliff's notes here is uh, eSync FSync is now toggleable. Uh, Epic online service integration is now th- shown through the UI. If you have a uh, GOG game that's using that, uh, you can sort games by playtime. And now there's actually improvements on GOG cloud save. So it supports multiple locations to better uh, enable you to pull stuff down, which is going to be handy because that's the only way you can play your god games on fucking Linux without having to yeah, use the it's interest. like the native versions, the native Linux games that GOG has don't have cloud save support. Yeah. <laughs> if it, seriously, major kudos to Lutris, major kudos to the Heroic Games Launcher. These projects are the only ones that actually make the GOG experience anywhere near 
usable, friendly. Isn't it, isn't but, it, but you could like, just install. You could just yeah. install Windows, guys. If you if you want to play God games, yeah, just, just install Windows. Windows on your Steam Deck. Yeah, that that's their solution. It's kind of a weird spot we're in though, because you definitely <laughs> will have the detractors of Steam, like, oh, they purchased from GOG. I'm like, why do you only buy from a company that doesn't support Linux at fucking all? Yeah, um, they clearly do not like Linux. They have begrudgingly so supported you it. Can, well, here's the thing. I mean, you can legitimately order from GOG, buy a game, and get the binary, and you own the game, not a license to play it, but yeah. it's on you, buddy, or you pay that iron price and sell your soul to the devil, <laughs> Gaben, and get a license with all the Linux support and all the cloud saves and everything. It just works. And you support a company that's actually, you know, supporting Linux as a nope. gaming platform. No, the no, one no. that released a no. console with Puff. Linux installed. Man. Well, you, you you mean the one that's upstreaming stuff to the kernel and to Mesa? So yeah, that, like, the one that's actually better? supporting the platform yeah. in it and it, of itself. It, it's a smoke show, Pedro. You've just been fooled, man. You've drinking the steam aid. <laughs> the the, 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 the Gaberade, I guess. The Gaberade. Is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The gay parade. That's a show yeah. t- there we go. That, 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 that's a show title. The gay parade. Um, <laughs> God, cloud saves. Uh, just fantastic work because we were talking about that during the break between segments. Is uh, heroic game launcher. The person or persons behind that have been going ham. They've been cranking like it that. out. Yeah, it, it, like it looks like Very a modern, good like attractive piece of software now, which is right. which is it, crazy. A lot of a lot of these open source projects. It kind of look like ass, but this is like a like. It, I could show I could show this to a Windows user, and they'd be like, "Wow, what's this crazy software? I want to use it." Which you it's available use. on Windows, and there's a lot of people using that on Windows instead of the a- actual Epic Game Store client. Well, which is just a slap across the face. <laughs> it's a way to use your Epic Game Store free games and still get some use out of the actual client. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's definitely a value add. Ah, uh, we got to throw all the way back. Another thing we were discussing, like the age of the physics video game, I think started with uh, like crayon physics in that era, you know, where you're drawing the things and something like that. Cray- cray- crayon <laughs> physics, world of goo. Yeah. There, there, there were, there were a Bridge lot of them. Constructor. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, they, they had, the, they had their heyday about a decade ago. Um, and this is kind of neat. This is Principia. It is a uh, open source dump of a game that, um, well, they, they they tried to Indiegogo it. It had a less than successful one. Uh, it was originally from 2003. It's fully open source. The trailer is kind of fucking mental. You basically get to build these crazy physics machines. Uh, you can make your own fun. There are uh, mini games inside. You can fight a giant rocket thing. That's Ed. Two, there's Ed 209. Yeah. Um. This, it's just a giant 2D physics sandbox. It's pretty neat. It's Aww, fully open source. Poop, poop. Yeah, hang on. There you go. Rewind. Blue eyes, white dragon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you know this, this is this is what the well, this is what the people really want. Um. But yeah. Um. It yeah. As a sandbox, it's kind of like a make your own fun thing. You can share things, uh, share your game modes, share your constructions. It's a little. It's a little uh, besieged esque. I would say a little. It bit. is. What? What? Here's here's how I would market it. No. Um, I would say uh, this is uh, 2D's Gary's Mod. Yeah, yeah. For- there's enough. Yeah, there's enough interaction and enough uh, fuckery that you can get or, just by mixing everything that the game offers you. That yes, maybe. <laughs> uh, b- building is pretty simple. Uh, they have an autogen script you do configure and the the, the Go script, I guess. Um, you can also export it for Android or Windows. Um, yeah, look, looks pretty cool. <laughs> Compilation on Windows and Linux should be easy. See further below. <laughs> uh, <laughs> on Linux, I'll believe you. On Windows, well, hang on. Where, where's the? Uh, <laughs> okay, if, oh. you're gonna, if you're gonna say that, you gotta show me. You gotta show me the Windows. Yeah, the Windows. there's the Windows. <laughs> Pac-Man. You, use Pac-Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use WSL. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, all right. That's the uh, no. Hack. They're using Minj. Uh, it's Minj W sixty four. There we go. <laughs> all right. Here's building on Linux. Yeah. That yeah. Work. <laughs> M- make make install. You'll be Pretty fine. Um, Androids <laughs> all do this. keep being gnarly. Android. Um, Gradle. Yep. Yeah. Video golf. This is uh, one of the first PC video games I had access to. Um, I was I was given a uh, sacrificial PC. But my mom, when I was a wee, wee, wee lad, it's a 286. Didn't do much. Monochrome display. Had a drive on it. It had DOS on it. It had a C partition. 
And later on, once my computer knowledge advanced far enough, I found out that it also had a deep partition on it. It's like, <laughs> whoa, what do I do? This was like a 30 megabyte hard drive at the time. Um, and on it, there was a fuck mothering golf game. Like old school, you know, it's monochrome, like boom. Played the snot out of that because, hey, man, you know, my glorious PC gaming master race. I'm like, <laughs> this mega drive, like that. Ah. But this reminded me of that a little bit. I'm talking about not regular video golf, nay, super video golf. And it's available for everything up to 16 players online. That's right. It's got offline modes, all that fun stuff, completely open source, cross platform, ultra wide mount. Look how wide that is. Now, how much would you pay? Nothing, because you can just download it. You can play it. We can play it online. Me and Jordan can spend an entire weekend going back and forth in our golfy battles with one another. <laughs> this, is, this is way too pretty for a fucking hipster pixel golf game. What the hell? <laughs> it does look very good. That's very good art. Even like the 3D models, they're just subtle enough that they fit in with the pixel art. Very good job. We're, I, I we're guess taking a look like, at VGA Golf 1.4 gameplay from Mostly Hairless. Uh, if you want to like and subscribe. This is what I imagine golf would look like if there was ever a version of, it's for audio listeners, of golf that was like on the Saturn. Or, you know, because if I say Virtua Golf, you'll go, okay, now I know what you're talking about. Flat shaded <laughs> polygons mm-hmm. with the occasional like bitmap. 2D thing, like trying to be 3D, jiggling around. <laughs> Fake so, bump mapping that couldn't actually be bump mapped. Yeah. <laughs> so so you, you think this is the closest we're going to get to a Linux port of Lee Carvalho's putting challenge? <laughs> I, this is uh, the TNG version, man. This is the TNG version. And it's open source because we can mud the shit out of it. We need to. Yeah, <laughs> the, needs, the thing that... Needs to, yeah, it needs to turn into Lee Carvalho's putting do, challenge. Do you know what each and every one of these holes needs? A gun circle. That's right. <laughs> the thing that caught my attention was the uh, the one screenshot of the pool table. It's like, oh, there's pool mechanics in it too. Okay, that, now you I, have my interest. I mean, <laughs> you know what? Gol- golf and pool basically like occupy sort of like the same problem space in physics, right? Yeah, it, instead of being grass, it's astroturf or just very, very yeah, soft it, carpet. And so. I, I mean, like, th- there, there are situations where you want to do it in snooker, but for the most part, you don't want to, like, launch your ball. <laughs> now, I do have to wonder if this is all um, rendered on the CPU. Mm. There's no Cade cam. That Ooh. seems a little... Uh, those 3D models seem a little bit too... Uh, even for today's CPUs. You say that, Pedro, but I was a, <laughs> I was one of the persons playing the original Unreal with a fuck mothering software render. Yeah, everyone right, so, played the early 3D games in software. <laughs> so, <laughs> because so you didn't the, have a uh, GPU, or if you did, it was shit. <laughs> the, the, the pre-compiled binary is built for Arch Linux, and it comes in at 84 megabytes. Mm. So, not, not, Unless not quite it's doing like some shenanigans with the RAM, like... Um, what is it? Hack slash loot. That's the actual executable is uh, six megabytes. But I, when you're uh, running it, it extracts into 250 megabytes in RAM. See, <laughs> you know, you say things like that earlier this week. I watched a tutorial on how to do ray tracing in SQL. <laughs> <laughs> what was the yeah. Excel one? I, I, someone made an, an entire that. game. This is this is how the rabbit hole journey started. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I saw you post the Excel like World Championships. I'm like, man, I gotta, which I gotta, aired on ESPN Sports. Ben. <laughs> but listen, like, nobody's watching the Ocho competitive anymore. Competitive spread after, cheating. After they canceled dodgeball, no one. The ratings went down, so they got they got to bring in the oh, spread cheating. Man. All right. All right. <laughs> Coming up next, are you ready to put on your mirror shades and say, "I'm in"? We're gonna play some Black and Flash. Black and Flash. Later. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week, prepare yourself. It's not hack and slash. It's black and slash. Uh, yeah, so this is the Chairquisition where we take a game. We run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions running very different hardware these days. Uh, not so much in the previous years, but now, now, 10 years later, we can finally all afford different computers. Um, yeah, run it on these Linux distributions and tell you what we think based on our highly scientific AI generated launch error rating system. Mm-hmm. It is it is 
100% approved by the YouTube recommendation algorithm. Uh, one chair means that it's garbage. Four chairs means that <laughs> it's garbage. Approved out of every VTuber that we were able to catch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> every, every VTuber we were able to track down where they actually <laughs> lived. Um, yeah, so uh, this, uh, this week we're taking a look at Black and Slash, as mentioned before. It's developed by Empra on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about five bucks. What is it? A tactical roguelike RPG where the items you choose to find your character create powerful builds from an abundance of loot as you try to save a corrupted retro computer system in bite-sized tactical cup puzzles. we got to thank Empra, not Emprog, for uh, sending us <laughs> keys over Curator Connect. You are not a filthy patak. You are, I don't know what a good word in Klingon is, because all, all right. I know is the best. <laughs> so let's get into it. Um, I guess, Ben, you're going You're going first this time. That's right, baby. Seize that Batholith. Uh, check it out. It launches out of the box over here in Debbie in 11 land. Uh, with an NVIDIA combo. Full screen, drag your own resolution, windowed mode. All right, not too bad. Had a solid for fuck's sake moment, though, when I reach, reached over grab my Xclone controller and I was like, oh, right, the cursor started moving around on with the emulation on the D-pad and like, get fucked. Uh, mouse emulation, really? In 2022, here we are. It does have a couple of soundtracks to choose from, you know, thinking maybe you get some volume sliders or anything like that. No, you click the magical music note, you just get a different beat. All right, that's fine. Is it fun, though? Is it fun? Well, you know what? You might remember um, earlier in this review when I brought up the mouse simulation being used in place of proper controller support. Well, that's code for if you're going to be playing black and slash with a keyboard and mouse in front of your fucking PC. Not chilling out on your couch with a controller or with your game gear. That sucks because black and slash, uh, it's a fun little pickup puzzle game. It's full metal RNG, but also something surprisingly I like. Now, granted, it does have options to modify the RNG, but I kind of like just the randomness of it. Anyway, back to my point. This is the kind of game that works best in spurts, not sit down marathon sessions. You got to keep this in mind. You move a triangle around. If you're watching the video, you decide on your movement, attack. Sometimes you survive. You know, you get some upgrades between the levels. You mix and match skills. You bitch about not getting the heals upgrade because that means your ass is about to die. And it's off to the next plane of 3D nope existence. And for $4.99, it's not bad entertainment, kids. It's not. Like, I kind of had a good time with it when I was sitting down in front of the computer with a mouse and keyboard playing it. But this mobile game was designed for touch, not mouse and keyboard. And you need to fix that. Now, I will say... Something that I did bring up. It's $4.99 on the Google Play Store. It's $4.99 on Steam. That's great. However, if you're going to go through the trouble of putting your game on Steam, goddamn, don't fuck up the very end game and not add controller support for it. Because most people do not have, last time I checked, touchscreen monitors. At the end of the day, though, I'll give it two cheers. It technically functions. You're just not going to have a good time with it because it's not designed from the ground up to keep that much attention for that long of a time. It's a mobile game. Jordan? Yeah. Uh, so on Fedora 35 64-bit with the R93900X and the GTX 1080i, launches out of the box, full screen, on the wrong monitor. Uh, you can toggle windowed mode, which <laughs> brings it down to a little phone-sized screen, which is your first clue that this is a mobile game. Uh, you can drag your own resolution from there. Uh, and, you know, controls are tapped to do everything because it's a mobile game. Uh, the visuals get the point of cross, and the soundtrack's actually pretty bumping. I thought I was going to hate it, but after a while, I was kind of grooving to it. Uh, Fun-wise, as far as tactics-style games go, this is okay. You have a pretty small board and a number of abilities uh, that you can expand upon as you kill stuff or try to get through obstacles. And each board has a couple different types of missions. Uh, you can either kill all the baddies, get to the objective in a certain number of turns, or last a certain number of turns. Uh, the maps are varied enough that uh, despite having all like the good like purple and green and like gold tier items, you still never have the exact geometry you need to not get fucked up. Um, also, there's there's a story here, but the minute I started getting computer puns in the dialogue, I just started like blocking out all the story stuff because like I don't I don't care. The missions are pretty short though, and uh, I can actually see this as a mobile game. This makes a lot of sense. It's a decent way to pass the time in between bus stops or if you're getting paid to poop at work. Uh, it's not revolutionary, but if you're going to pay five bucks for a game, I would say, you know what, this is this is actually worth five bucks. It's not, it's not lazy. It's not awful. It is kind of meh. So I'll give it, I'll give it two chairs, but you know, it's solid. 
Yeah, and I need to apologize. Uh, Jordan said it was a Unity. Uh, it was in the Unity engine. It is not. That was my mistake at the top. I sorry about that. It is. Godot. I'm still gonna get all the hate mail for it because I said it. <laughs> that, that that's uh, that's absolutely on me. I was the one uh, who cocked that up. So yeah, that's on me. It's Godot. That said, uh, it. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the um, RX 6700 XT, it launches out of the box. On the Steam Deck, it launches out of the box. Uh, it correctly V-syncs to your display refresh rate, whatever that happens to be. It doesn't have uh, controller support. Uh, well, it technically does, but it does the mouse emulation like... Uh, <laughs> Ven was mentioning earlier, uh, and it, it it's yeah you could use the trackpad or the analog stick, but yeah it is just mouse or you're using the uh, touch screen on the deck. There's uh, a lot of text, a lot of story uh, being thrown at you, and beep boops that simulate uh, voice acting. Uh, the graphics are simple but fairly effective at conveying what they need to convey. And um, yeah, no, the hovering, if you're on a level and you don't know what each enemy does, you hover over them and it tells you what's what. And for the fun, well, I, I, I feel like I need to reiterate once more to that despite not being very good at roguelikes, I do really like them. It, it is one of my favorite genres. Um, most of my sucking in these games stems from my lack of patience uh, and refusing to take it slow and you know actually looking at things and doing thing uh doing it properly i i just don't unfortunately um black and slash doesn't uh doesn't really strike my fancy Let, let's go with that it's not bad it's very well made in the sense that uh, you have the sort of tactics uh, thing like XCOM does. You have three actions instead of two per turn, uh, but it's completely solo and randomly generated loot. And the presentation, you know, it suggests that your elite hacksaw is going around uh, helping another hacksaw that's slightly less elite than you are, but the actual gameplay is fairly standard and easily understood. Honestly, there's absolutely nothing I can uh, I can point to say that it, it's wrong uh, or poorly done or bad in any way. Absolutely not. But there's also nothing I can point to to say that that's really good. It 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 it's perfectly serviceable. I've given bonus chairs for like good soundtrack, but the soundtrack didn't really didn't even call for me. Either of them they didn't really call to me at all. So uh, yeah, two chairs. <laughs> all right, so. I think I think the and at the end of the day this is kind of like a serviceable game. It's not it like <laughs> we it's not going to blow your mind for $5. There there are certainly some $5 games out there that will are just like what why are you charging this much for it? This is I just feel like it's a very difficult thing to recommend uh because yeah. it, from it's good that it's done with Gudo. I like that. That's good. Which also makes me doubly question of like put in proper controller support. Because, uh, again, in the DNA from the ground up, as Jordan was pointing out, this is a quick hit game. This is not a marathon weekend game that you can sit and play. I mean, it was designed, that game loop is like, pick up, play a level, get some things, maybe upgrade, maybe play another one, put it down. It's not going to justify firing up your desktop, sitting down, getting comfortable, like hitting it like, okay, well, I'm done with that. Maybe I could do something else. And especially for like couch play. Yeah. And for, for the, for the Steam Deck, you really... Like yeah, it has a touch, it has a touch screen, but like you really want that controller support. Yeah, the mouse simulation thing, like that. I tried, like I that is a special layer of hell anytime, but I always try. I'm like, no, especially when you're sitting there going, this would be so easy to adapt. Like far as your movement, and I gotta I gotta ask Pedro, how was the touch experience on the deck? Did you play around with that much? I uh, literally I started it on the deck. I did one round playing it with the. Um, trackpad and mm -hmm. the other i just use the touchscreen and yeah it's fine it, it's perfectly usable with a touchscreen it's again probably uh exactly what it was designed for i would i would hope so unless it was the elusive <laughs> mobile phone with the uh, mouse and oh yeah, yeah. The, re rem remember that psp phone like the sony one that they released yeah, yeah. oh man all right. all right well that's that's gonna do it for the chair position coming up next pedro asks obi-wan kenobi for help because okay. he's he's his own help It is the end. And, well, I did uh, actively uh, cock something up this week. <laughs> I'm 
put the wrong um, name for the engine for the game we threw chairs at. So there's something you can grill me about. You just it's assumed, not Jordan's fault. man. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not going to listen to you, man. I'm still... What are you talking about? It was absolutely my cock up. Uh, and uh, yes, I just assumed Unity, but then I actually looked it up. And then I heard Jordan say it's like, oh shit, no, it isn't. No. <laughs> I but just yeah, read the no. lines on the page. <laughs> it, it, it was absolutely on me. So if you'd like to uh, shout at me, you can absolutely do it. Go to LinuxGameCast.com. There's a contact button. You can write your uh, shouty business in the forum there. Pay attention to the caveats if you want to include more than just a shouting. I, I, I don't think the bot minds shouting all that much. It's pretty easy to pick up. You know, <laughs> Give us those thoughts, hints, allegations, anything you want to put in our direction, we'd greatly appreciate it. And on top of that, if you're working on an open source project or you got a game you just want to come on and plug, we're easy mode, baby. Easy mode. Just show up. And we're like, hey, come on the show. Just be like, like Dennis. Do. Yeah, like Dennis last mm-hmm. week. It's good. It's going to be the highest quality interview available. So even if you have a laptop fan blaring in your damn headset mic through the entire thing, <laughs> old man Vin can help you out at the end of the day. Are we good, gentlemen? Because I, we I need suppose- to talk about Noctua headphones. I and thought you were going to say Gangnam style. Nope, Noctua headphones. We got to talk about this. This comes from <laughs> Synthetic Owl. In regards to last week, Pedro proudly peacocking around his uh, new headphones that he has. Oh, here. Let's Very take a nice. Look <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. They're nice. <laughs> they are. Uh, they, now, the one thing I will say, the only thing I really took issue with, I don't care what color, you know me, I'm like utilitarian, but it's got like that uh, material, like you, that's going to get icky. I like like leather pads because why you just wipe them off with some rubbing alcohol. Uh, yeah, no, these are actually uh, velour, yeah. actual velour, velour. pads. Velour. Yeah. Icky <laughs> yeah. So they're comfy and they don't get terribly sweaty, which is nice. <laughs> they're gonna get comfy, but then they're, they're also gonna be like, "What's that other ring around them?" Like, oh. <laughs> so wait, wait, does that make Nori that kiss skin. in the situation? <laughs> uh, on to the hate mail. We've all made fashion mistakes in life. I once bought a blue jacket that looked cool under store lights, or the next day on the sun, looked like a giant fucking blueberry. So please understand, I take no pleasure in telling you. Dot, dot, dot. Your new headphones with the black circles on the sides, uh, they resemble hair buns. Make you look like Kylo Ren cosplaying as Princess Leia. It's just ridiculous, Pedro. And for the love of God, RMA them, exclamation point, so you know, being super serial. Otherwise, comma. Congrats on the 10-year anniversary. Sincerely. Synthetic out. Now, we have two different takes. Uh, I never thought about the buns. I can kind of see it. To me, every every time you posted a picture on that, you know, as one does, you buy something new. You're like, hey, look, here's a picture of the thing I got. It's kind of new. My first thought was, goddamn, knock to a mate's headphones. Um, <laughs> Admittedly, I bought these because the black version was about 50 pounds more expensive. So, yeah, l- l- let's just get the beigey ones. Uh, and uh, here's the thing, yeah. Pedro. These, you've seen them. <laughs> the other version, fucking cream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's some like some root beer flavored milk coloring there. Okay, I don't care what shit looks like, but I put off buying uh, those were these were not even on the table when all, all they had was cream. I'm like, doesn't exist. I'm not fucking wearing cream. <laughs> I guess I guess it pops too much in the dark background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The thing is, uh, you know, you're wearing the headset. You don't see that. I can see them right now on the return video. But uh, yeah, no, I, I don't see it. And they sound really nice and they're really comfy. Uh, uh, fuck you, Synthetic Hell. Uh-huh. <laughs> you my, giant my, my, blueberry. <laughs> my question is to you. Where did you stash those Death Star plans, Pedro? You need to tell me now. <laughs> something, something. I totally didn't give them to the R2 unit. All right, so you threw them in the trash. All right, let's get <laughs> Yes, the teeny tiny little blue and white trash can. <laughs> so basically what Pedro wants is everyone to pile on his Princess Leia headphones next week. Like, just nonstop. <laughs> on like 20 minutes. I'm segment. no Carrie Fisher, <laughs> but I will rock these buns. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you were going to say you're just going to do this. You hit a nerve and I like it. <laughs> like, Keep it coming. <laughs> Pedro takes shit personally. He's going to be going to bed tonight. He's like, no fucking curry for sure. And- there you go. <laughs> 
Uh, it is adorable. Um, you know what? Out of like the horrendous bullshit headphones you've owned over the years, at least these don't blink. They do not blink. They have uh, the removable ca- cable, which is kind of uh, the the AKG spoiled me in that. Uh, that is nice if you want to just replace the cable with a stretchy one or a slightly longer one or whatever. You just yank, yank. There, done. It's very nice. It's very nice. <laughs> well, I, I I hope they keep your ears warm on the planet Hoth. They they don't. They're open backs, so they're actually uh, a lot breathier around the ear holes. <laughs> oh man. That's one thing I want in headphones. Uh, like seriously, somebody wrote in the show if you know, like I want a MagSafe connector. Oh, for like the for like the yeah. yeah for, for, if you walk away, it just because <laughs> this rarely happens. <laughs> but like I had a lot of editing to do um, last Sunday, so I was like on a like hour and a half coming up on two hour stretch. You forget you have headphones on. You're like I need something to drink. And you get up and you barely catch yourself. Sometimes you don't. And the head just, when, when the, with, with, with these guys too they got like the long fucking cable that will just like clothesline some shit as well they will and they will break shit <laughs> they'll be fine yeah they won't have a scratch on them man but they'll knock a hole through your monitor man you know and yeah so. yeah it's move, moving at a very fast speed at the end of that nice safe connectors Max when safe does will, the patent expire on that i don't know and apple's not like apple being like extra dick like we're not even using it right now T. Yeah. I think they've gone back to it on the new MacBooks. Uh, they don't have room. They need. They need <laughs> it's all in Type C now. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, the the new ones, the around the the Type C connector, it's actually magnetic, so it holds it in place. Well, that, that's good because those Type C connectors are shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I gotta agree with that. All right, everyone, on that um, magnetic. Thing stuff. I don't know. On on that electromagnetic pulse. <laughs> there we go, pulsing right in your heart, right in your feels, right in your digestive system. But watch out for third digestion. It's a bitch. If you want to get in touch with me, just at Vin Stone on Twitter. I'm doing things there. You might find out. Uh, you know, if you get a quick question or something like that, that's fine. It's probably best to leave YouTube comment if you hit and edit video. Because or hop in our IRC, hop in our Twitch chat, hop in our Discord chat. That's where I'll have like. A long form conversation is not going to fucking happen on Twitter. I immediately hit the brakes on that. But always look forward to hearing from you. Mass.lenningsteamcast.com. Same thing, same rules. But we are there. And uh, yeah, I'll like and uh, subscribe if you got something interesting. So. I'm Jordan. I'm not an electromagnetic pulse. I'm just the pulse setting on your food processor. You can feed me some carrots at the Burning Fool on Twitter or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me uh, pondering the fucking magnets. How do they work? Uh, on Twitter at unaccounted for. Not really, but uh, if you do have some it's a miracle funny thing, gifts, feel free to share. That's fine. <laughs> Miracles, <laughs> just like babies. <laughs> All right, credits. <laughs> yeah, we, we, you can totally play snake on us. That still works. <laughs> I mean, if you throw us at someone, it might hurt a little bit. I mean, I mean, that's that's, that's true. You, you gotta launch me at like a pretty medicine high pavement. Force level. Probably still work. Well, we we gotta thank our advisors, uh, Omegas and Arthur, and our executive producers. They're coming up here, scrolling very slowly. I Barbara, Scott, Flying, Lester, Tom, Tess, Mike G, <laughs> uh, Empty Drummer, Kohaku, George, Pebble, Tomaj, and Unoid, and Abstraction. Our lone little Nikki fan. Keep it yes. real. Sea monsters like Renault, Rider X Machina, Truggy Verduda, Justin Frostclaw, Numbin, David, Darkwing, and of course, System T. And Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, B, Romeo, Marson, Renee, or Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, Smashly G, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2. Not Watch, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Back, Game of Tron, Dodger, Zetherus Gaming, Rue, Turnover, Cheesy Bacon, Kydere, Stein, M. Fox Dog, and Spine. Someone's been practicing. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> hey, we got, I seen Mir doing the things. We got Friso, Alex, and we'll hope old Jim, you know him, Gayer Ducky. We got Strider, Sacred Eggs. Burlick. Isn't it supposed Moms. to be Dolrick? I don't know. I think that R and that I just that write what they put down. <laughs> Find our standing right. cannibals on our fuck wall. Back to the and Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Lennox New, Gayer Ducky, Noctilus, John Eshop, and Game of Tron. Gentlemen, it is time to say goodnight and hope that no one, um, Dies in a fire. Unless they do. But remember, record it. LG Good afternoon.
ABC Family. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Brought to you by Hulu. Lads, we've just been bought by Disney. Five dudes.